This is Judy Miles from Lexington, Massachusetts. She decided to send two female cross spiders into space in 1973 for the Skylab 3 space station. The four main questions that she and her colleagues had at the time were, will the spider be able to eat and drink in the space environment? How can a spider survive in space? Can spiders mate and reproduce in space? And four, the most interesting question was how exactly spiders were going to spin a web when there was no gravity. And although the spiders were exposed to radiation in space, they did not morph into mutants, so eventually the scientists got all the questions answered. The launch took place on July 28, 1973, and the experiment was set up in a way that the spider, released by crew member Owen Garriott, to a box similar to a window frame, would be able to spin a web. A camera was set up to capture images and footage of spiders' activities and their webs. Three days prior to launch, each spider was given a housefly and provided with a storage vial containing a sponge soaked in water. The name of the spiders was Arabella and Anita, and they needed some time to adapt to the environment without gravity. Both Anita and Arabella made what was described as erratic swimming motions when they were released into the experiment cage. After a day in the box, Arabella produced her first rudimentary web in the corner of the frame. The following day, she produced a complete web. These results prompted the astronauts to extend the initial protocol, so they provided additional water and fed the spiders bits of filet mignon. Just for you to know, A. diatomatis can easily survive up to three weeks without food if an adequate water supply is available. On August 13th, half of Arabella's web was removed to prompt her to build another. Although the spider ingested the remainder of the web, it started building a new one only after the crew provided it with additional water. And this time, the web was more symmetrical than the first one. Unfortunately, both spiders died during the experiment. It's not entirely clear what caused their deaths, but it is believed that the stress of the launch and the microgravity environment may be the reason. There were also some technical problems with the experiment, including problems with the spider's food supply and temperature regulation. But since a lot of questions still remained unanswered, scientists have conducted a lot of other spider experiments with gravity over the decades. Spiders have had weights attached to them, been made to build their webs horizontally, been put into to a centrifuge, which the spiders were reportedly very unimpressed about, and continuously rotated as they tried to build a web. And finally, in 2008, they decided to conduct another experiment and send spiders to the International Space Station. And it went even worse than the first experiment. They used two species of orb weaver spiders, one for the experiments and one in a separate chamber just as a backup. And this time, the scientists did provide them with food in the form of fruit fly colonies. But in what can only be described as a worst case scenario, the backup spider escaped into the main chamber, which they couldn't open for safety reasons. The spiders were getting into each other's way, spinning somewhat muddled webs, and if that were not enough, the flies that were supposed to be just spider food reproduced more quickly than they were supposed to. After some time, their larvae crawled out into the breeding box on the floor of the case into the experimental chamber and, two weeks after, covered large parts of the window. After a month, it was impossible to see the spiders behind the fly larvae. And on top of that, the female spiders happened to be actually male spiders. In other words, the mission was a huge success. But still, despite all the difficulties, scientists managed to get a lot of useful information from this experiment. When the web samples were studied, the experiments determined that the thread spun in the mission was finer than that spun before the mission. Although the patterns of the webs made in orbit were not drastically different from those that were built on Earth, there were differences in the characteristics of the thread. In addition to being thinner overall, the silk web in orbit exhibited variations in thickness, where it was thin in one place and thick in another. The start and stop nature of the silk happened to be an adaptation of the spider's ability to control the elasticity of the silk and the resulting web. The habitat's cameras collected imagery throughout the spider's time in microgravity to document any differences between those in space and the same type of spider on the ground. As it turns out, the golden orb spider's behavior did not change greatly in microgravity. Their webs looked much like webs spun on Earth, though in space, the webs were more circular. 
The research found that golden orb spiders like to spin their webs following a timetable, in contrast to orb spiders from a previous investigation who would spin webs at all times of the day. But it was the use of the lights which were all pointing down that actually led to a surprising discovery. Schock, the scientist who analyzed the spider experiment, said, We wouldn't have guessed that light would play a role in orienting the spiders in space. We were very fortunate that the lamps were attached at the top of the chamber and not on various sides. Otherwise, we would not have been able to discover the effect of light on the symmetry of the webs in zero gravity. That spiders have a backup system for orientation like this seems surprising since they have never been exposed to an environment without gravity in the course of their evolution. Analysis of the pictures showed that spiders rested in random orientations in their webs when the light was turned off. They oriented themselves away and downwards when the lights were on. It seems that spiders use light as an additional orientation aid when there is no gravity. Since spiders can also build their webs in the dark and catch prey without light, we assumed that light plays absolutely no role in their orientation. On the other hand, a spider's sense of position could become confused while it is spinning its web. It seems that spiders have a secret weapon for navigating zero gravity, their very own spider sense. It just goes to show that when it comes to adaptation, Spiders are way ahead of the curve, or should we say the parabola. So the next time you find yourself lost in space, just remember, when all else fails, look for the light, just like our arachnid allies.